Here, here to get started, I'll speak to you for about 15 minutes. The intent is just to give you a glimpse on what really is happening on social media. We all talk about social media, it's been there for a while now. What really is happening and what, how is it relevant in the HR scheme of things? Right? To get started, I want to get started by a, with a quote by Angela Ahrens. For those of you, uh, for all the lovely women in the audience, we're all fans of this brand called Burberry, yes? So Angela used to be the CEO of Burberry and from the CEO of Burberry, uh, Tim Cook, who's the CEO of Apple, hired her to scale the retail business at Apple and then she joined there as the SVP at, at Apple. While she was giving one of the interviews, somebody asked her on digital and she said she grew up in a physical world and she spoke English, but this generation is growing up in a digital world and they speak social. I'll tell you exactly what I mean. A lot of us have kids home, show of hands, a lot of us have kids. Aren't they on the phone all the time? And all of you in the audience, 90% of you are on Facebook. 90% of your kids are not. They are on Instagram. And when you try to follow them on Instagram, do they block you or do they let you see it? They block you more often than not. And even if they've given you access, you still can't see some of their feeds because on those specific feeds, they'll block you. right? Because they want their own audience and they don't want you. So clearly, language was a barrier earlier, but today language isn't a barrier, but you've got social media, which is the heart of things. The other thing, Pierre, who used to be the CEO of Accenture, made this profound statement. He said, digital is the main reason just about half of the companies on Fortune 500 have disappeared since 2000. Imagine this, in the last 20 years, 250 of Fortune 500 companies have disappeared because they didn't catch on to the digital bandwagon. Think about this, Kodak used to be the favorite company of most camera persons earlier. They didn't adopt to digital, what happened? They went bankrupt. Think about 10 years back, 12 years back, which used to be your favorite phone? Bang on, where's Nokia today? Gone, when Apple invented a touch phone, people said, what are you smoking? Nobody's gonna be using the touch phone. And then what happened? Everybody uses the touch phone today. So that's just context for digital and social. I just thought we should take a quick preview on what brands are doing on social. So what I'm gonna do is, let's play a small quiz. I'm gonna show you one slide now. Somebody posted this on social media. They posted it on Instagram, they posted it on Twitter, they posted it on Facebook. I'd like for you to tell me who posted this and what exactly was it, okay? Check this out. Somebody posted this on social media. Who do you think posted this? Any guesses from the audience? Who do you think posted this? Or two, what do you think this is? I don't have a lot of time because they're running me by the clock, 15 minutes, I've lost two, 13 minutes, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Anybody, what do you think that is? Who, who's been smoking that drug? <laughs> just, say, just, just, just playing, it is a drug indeed. So who do you think posted this? Ram Gopal <laughs> Excellent answer, I wish there were a prize, I would give that to you. All right, but it's not Ram Gopal Verma. Any other guess? No guesses? So just take 10 seconds to absorb this. Take a look at that and see who that is. I kid you not, this is the Mumbai police and you see the blue tick, it's a verified handle and they're saying LSD, let's stop drugs, hashtag Hoshmeya. Now a few of us must be Pablo, Nas uh, Pablo Escobar fans from the Netflix series. Yeah, we've seen that series. India is in a huge drug problem these days. A lot of kids between 14 and 21 are doing a lot of dope, and that's a problem. But you can't just go putting people behind bars, you can't lock them up. So the cops said, let's speak to them in a manner and in a language that they understand. And this is beautiful, right? Engaging with this, engaging with humor, engaging with such language that people understand on platforms that they are at, right? Check out the next one. This is, I kid you not, the commissioner of Mumbai police. This is the commissioner of Mumbai police. Again, it's a verified handle. For those of you who said Ram Gopal Verma and drugs, you'll understand this. He's saying, if you roll, underline roll, we will weed you out, underline weed. And normally, when I see the cops, I don't know about you, but I have the tendency to run away. I think cops and sales guys are exactly the same. They're always after your money. So they're only gonna create problems for you, right? But this is a cop I'd love to talk to, interact with, because he's talking in a language on a platform that I admire, right? 
Now, if the Mumbai police is doing all this, the Karnataka police can't be too far behind, right? Check out what they're saying. They're saying, roses are red, violets are blue, heard you're selling drugs, we'll come visit you. <laughs> and this is the Pablo Escobar character from Narcos. So right when Narcos was at its prime and trending, these guys used this content. But check out how beautiful that is, right? Message communicated in a very simple language. Now, did they tag Netflix here? You don't see any mention of Netflix here, right? So nobody needs to respond to this. But you know what? Somebody responded to this. And check out the response and how beautiful that response is. Netflix actually responded to that tweet says, roses are red, violets are blue, Murphy and Pena might be looking for you. And Murphy and Pena are the lead detectives in the series Narcos. And then again, Bangalore City Police replies saying that roses are red, violets are blue. We got this Netflix. If we need help, we'll tell you. You chill. <laughs> Isn't this amazing social media banter happening between two amazing brands? We know Netflix is a cult brand, but how about the Bangalore police? How amazing is that? And you know who does this? Two kids who are in their 20s who this is outsourced to by the police. So if you don't have that skill set in house, bring in outsiders. And to do social media, please hire youngsters because people in their 40s and 50s can't do social media. They don't get it. They aren't on those platforms. And think about it. Yeah? I mean, for all your social media roles, for when you want to hire, I see this every day and my heart burns when I see this. Now hiring Java developer on LinkedIn. Are you kidding me? Who's going to apply to that job, man? It's so boring, right? Nobody's going to apply. When have you ever seen an amazing post like this? Right? So I'm just critiquing HR a little bit here. Just so that you'll understand the perspective that I'm trying to bring, okay? Another quick example. Spotify, we're filming with Spotify, this amazing music app. Right? So they tweeted, we made a playlist for Sartaj sir, expecting a big thumbs up on him. Now that's a pun on thumbs up because Sarka, Sartaj loses his thumb in the series Sacred Games. Right? But what I want to show you was not this, but somebody who responded to this. So Spotify does this. Now again, they've not tagged Netflix. Netflix responds. They say, we can be sure that Sartaj would give the playlist at least one thumbs up. Why? Because he has only one thumb, he loses the other in the series. Right? So great way to kind of engage in conversations. And then you know Zomato, and there's this character called Radhika Apte in most Netflix series. And everybody was taking her case because she was in too many Netflixes uh, last time, or too, too popular, right? So Zomato actually tweets, and you thought only Radhika is versatile. What do you mean Radhika is versatile? We have Shahi Paneer, Matar Paneer, Kadai Paneer, Butter Paneer. You have all of these Paneer. So they're saying even Paneer is versatile. And look at the pun they took on Netflix, right? Netflix has something called Netflix Originals. They called it Zomato Originals. <laughs> how cool is that? Now that's how you do social media. You got to talk to people in a language that understands and you know humors them. Not in a boring way, give me six years of marketing experience. Come on. That's boring. That's not how you do social media, right? Another one. Netflix reply is epic. They say, look at all the paneers you mentioned. Butter R, Mutter A, Radhika D, R A D H I K A, Radhika, she is omnipresent. Even in Paneer, right? This is a lesson in social media marketing that these brands are kind of teaching us. Now, some of you think this is happening spontaneously. Actually, for all you know, this is planned and this is collaborated. These are scripted. So it's completely okay to script stuff, but people think it's part of the moment, and that's how you kind of catch their attention. This is happening in the marketing world. This is happening in the business world. I'd love to show you and discuss what's happening in the talent world of things, how we do things, right? how HR does things. Let's take a look at this. How many of us know this guy, Brian Acton? A few of you probably do. I hear a few murmurs. So many years back, this is probably eight years back. Okay, Eight years back, this guy goes to interview at Twitter. After about eight or nine rounds of interview, at the last round, he gets rejected. No problem. He doesn't get dejected. He just goes to Twitter and says, got denied by Twitter. That's OK. It would have been a long commute from home anyways. This is, he's based in San Francisco. So he said, bahut dur tha, right? it's too far. It's OK. Then he goes and interviews at Facebook. Okay, 12 rounds of interviews at Facebook. 12th round, poor guy gets rejected. So what does he do? He goes on to Twitter. He also goes on Facebook and says, Facebook turned me down. It was a great opportunity to connect with some fantastic people. Looking forward to life's next adventure. The same guy interviews with 15 of Silicon Valley's top companies. You name it. Airbnb, LinkedIn, Instagram, you name it. Everybody rejects him. 
Now, why do they reject him? Because they say, we don't have a role for you. We just don't have a role for you. And you're too unique from a skill set's point of view. So he gets rejected. So he doesn't know what to do because he's tried at the best companies and he gets, he gets rejected. So what does he do? He goes ahead and starts something called WhatsApp, which gets bought four years later by Facebook, who rejected him for $19 billion. $4 billion out of that was cash. 15 was in stock. Now, in talent acquisition, we have two what I call holy grail metrics. One is TTH, time to hire. The other is CPH, cost per hire. Most of our TA leaders swear by this, right? What was the cost per hire here? When Facebook acquired WhatsApp, it was 51, 51 people, and they paid $19 billion. $500 million per person. The same guy came to you four years back. The same guy. You rejected him. And you rejected him, why? Because you thought he was this. You thought he was a purple squirrel. And your hiring manager said, I want this exact same specific set. I want someone who works on Hibernate, Scrum, R, Python, Ruby, uske saath, um, Raita hona chahiye saath mein. I don't know. A whole bunch of things they say. I want this unique combination. You just go and tell them, God doesn't make people like that. And then your CNB uh, team probably tells you that he's at 200 percent earlier. We can't hire him. Right? I mean, come to think about it, these are ground realities today that need to be taken into consideration. That's the one view. The second view is most candidates, this happens to them. When they apply to jobs, this happens to them. They die in your applicant tracking system. For those of you who've used Teleo, how many of you have used Teleo? Show of hands. You double click on a rec and the damn thing circles for five minutes, right? Don't you find that annoying? Now think about it. I was speaking to someone in the morning. I was telling her, India, the average recruiter to rec ratio is 1 to 35 which means that at any given point in time, a recruiter has 35 open recs. And in India, mein toh, applying for a job is amazing. Students are applying for director level jobs. Try karne mein kya hai, right? They'll say, there's no cost to applying, right? It's free. For all you know, they might like my skill set. Epitome of positivity. So how does a recruiter filter through 300 candidates for 35 positions, 10,000 candidates, in about a week's time. It's practically mission impossible. And that's when Liam Neeson takes their life. They die a painful death in your ATSs. So our systems are inefficient. That's my learning number one. Our systems are inefficient. Two, we're not using technology and people efficiency. And that's the problem, which is what is failing us. What we need to do is the opposite. And companies like Facebook are realizing this, and they're changing this. So for example, Sheryl Sandberg, who's the CEO of, CEO of Facebook, she said, we, in today's world, people are trying to make jobs fit around people rather than people fit around jobs. I think that is what we need to do. We need to look at people and say, come on board, we'll figure out what you should do. But then we have like, oh, but how do we scale this? How do we solve for this? Think about it, all great companies have started with this same funda. It's just that when they get too big, they change and then decline sets in. So I think it's time to listen to Cheryl and take her advice and really, really change the way we hire. Last slide, before which I'll close, all right? So I've taught you about, uh, I've given you a couple of tricks on social media. One, you've got to focus on the candidate and speak to them in a channel and in a language that they understand and appreciate, not our lens. To hire young people to do your job, especially on social media, because we don't get the psyche. Three, make sure that your systems and processes are efficient so that your recruiters can adapt and act as talent advisors to business and not just people who are sending four CVs, right? That's not their job. Their job is to tell them, you should hire this guy because he's done one, two, three, four. This is the business problem he solved. This is how he can help us scale. Push back to hiring managers. That's their job. The last thing I want to tell you is adopt new age technology. And I want to give you a specific example. I have a hobby. My hobby is every two weeks, every alternate Saturday, uh, I want to meet someone who I have not met to date. I always have a wish list of people who I want to meet. These people are doing very well for themselves in their life. Either they're sportsmen, they're food connoisseurs, I love eating food, uh, celebrity chefs, or they're potentially people who are in corporate who've done really, really well for themselves. So I try and request people to connect me to them so that I can meet with them and you know we can learn from each other. One of those Saturdays, I wanted to meet a guy called Sunny. So I sent someone a note saying that, hey, I want to meet Sunny. Sunny, four years back, was doing some groundbreaking work, actually five years back, was doing some groundbreaking work on AI, artificial intelligence, in Bangalore, in a small location called Indranagar. 
So I heard a lot about him, and I was learning about artificial intelligence then. So I was like, it'll be great to meet him. So somebody introduced me to him. This guy responded at 2 o'clock in the night. Hey, Adil, pleased to meet you. I'm currently in San Francisco. Back in 15 days, we'll connect CCing Aditi to set up time. So Aditi responds to me within like 10 minutes or 12 minutes at 2 a.m. in the night. I remember I had gotten back home that late, that day after a family function. So Aditi replies saying that, hey, Adil, pleased to meet you. Amazing to see the kind of work you're doing at LinkedIn. I see the workshop you did at Facebook did really well in Hyderabad. By the way, uh, Sunny is available on this particular date. Let me know if a time works. Like, how does this girl know so much about me? Right? Anyways, I responded to her. I said, yeah, this works. Uh, 10 days later, proactively, she sends me a mail saying that, hey, Adil, just wanted to uh, I, I just hope your Delhi trip is going well. I noticed you were out of town. By the way, Sunny's trip has got extended. He's going to be back uh, after another week. So can we please reschedule to the meeting to this particular date and this particular time? I said, that time doesn't work for me, but two hours later will be good because I'm flying in that evening to the city. So, he says, so she said, 8 p.m. is great. That way, you all can have dinner at your favorite restaurant, Black Rabbit, which is on 100 feet road. It's five minutes from office. How the hell does she know Black Rabbit is my favorite restaurant? Every time she's personalizing stuff and telling me stuff. I used to be working for LinkedIn then, and we were hiring for an executive assistant for our chairman, Nishant Rao. LinkedIn had amazing referral bonuses. You refer anybody for any role, flat 75,000 cash. The sales guy in me started thinking, I'm like, this is a good opportunity to make money. We'll go, I'll, I'll reach half an hour earlier. I'll meet Aditi, I'll try and impress her. We'll refer her at LinkedIn. If she gets hired, I'll get paid 75,000 bucks. 50K tax-free money is amazing, right? So I was like, okay, I reach that 7.30. A security guard is there, small office. Security guard looks at me, he says, kiss I said, Aditi. He says, what's your name? I said, my name's Adil. He said, oh, come, Sunny sir is waiting for you. I'm like, mil lenge, Sunny sir, wait, where's Aditi? He's like, no, 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 Sunny sir told me to bring you as soon as you came. I'm like, okay, so I went, Sunny's sitting in his uh, conference room. I start talking with Sunny, and then I told him, yeah, hang out, man, I mean, what's this? Where's Aditi? How is she so good? How do you find her? Besides, why isn't she in office? And he starts laughing. And after laughing for 30 seconds, he tells me, Adil, Aditi does not exist. Aditi is a bot. I made her to manage my calendar. I lost it. So here, here, here's the problem. I call myself an expert in artificial intelligence. I'm sending her email with smileys to, to try and recruit her for my firm. And then he tells me it's a bloody bot. I was like, are you kidding me? And then I went back home that night after dinner with a vengeance. And I started looking and it turns out Sunny caught me again. He didn't build that bot. There's a site that gives these. You all can get your own Adil or own Aditi by going to www.x.ai. Just the word X, the letter X. Dot AI for $35 a month, you get an AI assistant for free that manages your calendar and responds to everything. So think about what this could mean in the application of business, right? Most of recruiters' time today goes in figuring out if the hiring manager is available, candidate is available, coordination, which is a huge pain. Imagine all of this automated by technology. You don't have to do anything. It's all automated. So you can then just focus on adding value. This is what I want to talk to you about, artificial intelligence. It's here, it's here to stay, it's happening every day. You have also probably got emails and you've not realized like me, but it's about time to accept that AI is here to stay and start thinking about how you can use your AI in business. This is 2019, thank you so much. Lovely speaking to you all.